Hello, this is for the single digit number of people that still pay attention to the, the redstone computer I'm still building very slowly using the immersive engineering mod. Uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons for the long delay is I was having trouble with something. And it was memory cells actually. So the first memory cell, which is very simple, it's just um, XOR, register 0, is equal to register 1 and 0. So if register 0 is active, then register 0 stays active, basically. It's a self-feedback XOR gate. And it works. You see it saves the state. And sometimes, if we hit this other button, it actually clears. But as you can see, that's not a guarantee. And that's because there's no delay in this. And if it was just a simple, quick pulse, like that, that'd be one thing. But if you notice, we hit the button, and the button stays down for a long time. So that's actually not a pulse. It ends up being a steady signal. And since it's a steady signal, only about every four times it resets correctly. And then I didn't have a lot of time to work on it. And I had to do a bunch of research. And we came up with this new one. Put this there, put this there, put that there, put that there. And then we plop these five circuits in. And now, it saves keeps outputting the signal. The signal stays output. You hit that and it clears with 100% reliability because it introduced another step. <clears throat> so it's using NOR registers again, well NOR registers instead of an XOR register. <clears throat> And since it goes register 2 equals register 0 and register 3, and then register 3 equals register 1 and register 2, register 1 being, uh, register 0 being set to white and register 1 being set to orange, and then the output is set to magenta. It actually works because it adds delay into the tick. So now we put a signal in there. There we go. We put this. And since it adds that delay with the extra step, it's actually 100% reliable. It's just slower. Which means, in the scheme of things, when it gets to the bigger programmable computer I'm eventually going to build, which will finish sometime next year, maybe, uh, it's going to be a very, 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 very slow computer. But... I have functioning memory. And each one of these logic units, technically, there's another issue we'll get to in a moment, but I can hold, since it's exactly five logic circuits long, each one of these can hold two bits. So I only need four logic circuits to do this correctly, I, well, well, four of these logic units. I don't need eight. If I was doing an eight-bit computer, or if I was doing a ten-bit computer, which it might end up being, I'd only need to use five instead of ten. But technically, I need double that number. Because the entire thing breaks down the moment I take this chip out. You see, it no longer maintains. Because the status of the registers inside each one of these logic units doesn't actually stay. <laughs> so despite the fact it's referring back to itself, with register 3 being sent back to register to the log this part here, and going back through again, now there's things I might be able to do no, there's actually nothing I can do, because if I change this 
and put it down here, it still doesn't work because the way these logic units work, they have to be able to bounce signals between each other in order to make a memory cell actually function, which is what's happening because I'm converting this white signal, which is regist register zero set to white. It's being set back in here. I forgot necessarily where. Oh, no, it's in this thing itself. So white is set magenta. So if magenta is active, so is white. This thing spits out magenta, goes into this logic unit, which spits out white, and then gets it sent back into this one, which continues to spit out magenta. It has to have that loop in order to function. Without that loop, nothing happens. It cannot refer to itself, which is really crappy. So if I make an 8-bit computer, I'll still need 8 logic units. <clears throat> if I make a 10-bit, I'll still need 10 logic units. Now there's things I could do to not require as many that I might do, but that is... <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually going to implement it because that might just end up being a really big headache. So each... Each, one, each logic unit will have to have a pairing logic unit in order for the memory to actually function correctly. And we'll see if there's ways around it or not. There's no necessarily, there's no real guarantee. <clears throat> but I might be able to work out something. Maybe. We'll have to see. Maybe I'll only need one of them and I can put these logic circuit conditions in there and have that work. <clears throat> now there's an extra bit here. Because now, let's just say that's the output. And if I hit this switch, oh, the output goes away, but there's no input. The input doesn't turn on. Now, I was going to use two bits of memory, but no, I can just toss this thing in and give myself a flip-flop, and there we go. So, if the output is on, this is triggered. It's a X, uh, N or NOR gate with magenta and magenta. Because magenta is, that's just in case this, this point say it's the output. And as, if the output is on, then the input is not. Now I can swap it. Output is off, input turns on. I don't need an extra memory cell. So in the end, <laughs> the entire substation will technically be a 4-bit programmable computer without a clock. Because the pulse for the clock is you hitting buttons. And that is the pulse that determines the data in the system. So, there we go. This stupid thing oh oh no someone in my colony died so this stupid thing has taken me a month and a half which is partly because well lack of sleep issues and me being busy trying to get stuff done for the trip that because i'm going out of town for three weeks and i needed to get three weeks of worth of videos done and my friends have actually been online to play games, and frankly, I'm going to be playing games with them, then doing this, probably. So, yeah, but it's getting there. Very slowly, we now have functional and 100% reliable memory, which was a giant, giant problem. So now, the next thing to do is just to sit down, and if we come back over here, sit down by running across the base. Rebuilding this entire control system in here to match the control system we have set up. I can't fly here because I will die. Set up at the substation. I have no idea if this is actually faster or not. 
I should have hit the pause button on the recording because I've got that set up to the pause break key on the keyboard. But we still have to run all the way over here. Sometimes it just stops running. That takes a lot to load. I've got to mirror this setup over at the uh, control panel for the base. And I still have to finish things. Uh oh, this is concerning. Why is that not working? Fine. Oh, that didn't drop. I'm very worried that these elevators are not working. So I've got to finish wiring everything up in here and in here. We're partly finished because this is working. Uh-oh. This is a concern. Did the server restart on me? It might have restarted on me. So yeah, there's things that need to be finished. I really wish I could just get the level and host it on my local machine. But can't right now. So, yeah, things that need to be finished and things that need to be worked out, because I've probably lost connection or something. Yeah, I'm going to say I've lost connection. So yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, but that's where we stand on this. We've had issues figuring some things out. See ya. Hello, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon and all that wonderful fun stuff, because subscribing to YouTube is no longer enough. Hit all the things. Hit the like button. Like the comments. Comment multiple times. And don't forget to share. But subscribe and hit the bell. See you next time. Bye. I think our tank exploded. Whee! There it goes! The plane or our tank? The ta well, there's a tank flying through the sky.